I'm Dean Safola and this is the Azure Academy. And today is the day that we have been working towards for the last several videos. Today is when we connect our on-prem network to our Azure network and we join our domain controller uh, that's on-prem to the one that we're going to build up in the cloud and we complete our fundamental series. So we've got a lot to do. So let's get started. So in our Azure portal, I wanted to review uh, where we're at. So here is our virtual network gateway. And we had set up a point to site connection, which currently I am not connected to, but let's do that now. So we'll go to our network settings here and connect. And this is going to allow my Windows 10 desktop here to connect to our Azure environment. And so I can go to our jump server that's in the cloud. OK, and we put in our password. This is our local admin password that we built the server with. All right, so there's a few things that I want to take a look at first. So let's open a command prompt. And I'll type in ipconfig all. OK, so there's a few things to take note of. So first of all, we have our IP uh, subnet mask range here of .240 as the ending. And that's because our subnet mask comes from the subnet size, which is a slash 28. And then we have our DHCP and DNS, which are the same IP address. Now, if you remember, this was our Azure provided DNS because we had not set a custom DNS yet. And our domain controller in the cloud uh, it's actually going to be dot five. Oops, one nine two dot one six eight dot zero dot five. So we'll set both of these. So this one will respond first, and we'll need that so that we can join the domain because you can't join a domain without proper DNS working. And then this will become our secondary domain controller, which will be our DC01 system. So we'll join this guy to the domain and then this guy, but we have a problem. Our problem that we have to solve first is now that we've set our custom DNS, in order for all of our systems to get the new DNS settings, we do have to reboot our VMs. So to do that, I'm just going to pass uh, shutdown RT0. And this command is just a normal Windows command to do a reboot and do it immediately. Now, there's another box, which is going to be our domain controller, which was the dot five. And I'll log on to that box. And you'll see the same kind of story. There's the IP config all. And there is our same DNS story. So let's do that same command, shut down RT0. OK, and those VMs should be back up in a couple seconds. So I will go back to the dot four and we'll reconnect. And as you can see, we picked up our new DNS settings. And just here to azureacademy.com. And we get prompted for our creds. Welcome to the domain. And we have 
to reboot. And if we do a refresh on here, there's our computer. The other system that we had was this guy. So this object was here already. I pre-populated it. So now we'll join that computer to the domain. So you can see it works in both ways. And then what we'll do after that is we'll promote this server to be our domain controller. And then we'll have our secondary domain controller, one on-prem and one in the cloud, which means we'll also have DNS presence in both places. Okay. start and if we go back to our original box and this is just going to be our jump server you'll see that I can still connect and now it's got a fully resolved domain name and that also means okay so we look at DNS and we see that we have a leased DNS entry for our new systems this one was here statically because that's going to be a domain controller. So let's go back to this guy. And now we see that he's joined to Azure Academy. So this is our jump server. So we're done with him for the moment. So I will log out. And we'll go back to our new domain controller. Cool, so now that we have our first domain controller, and that's on-prem, and we're joining systems that are in Azure back to on-prem, that's great. But now we're gonna promote this box to be a domain controller. So we're gonna add a role, and it's gonna be on this server. And we're gonna make this server into a domain controller. If you check that box. And we're just going to hit next through the rest of these. So you could do it through a script or do it the way that I'm showing you here. And this will take a few seconds to finish. Okay, so the base installation of all of our domain roles features has finished. Okay, so we're going to add this server to a uh, existing domain which is azureacademy.com and we're going to change our creds to be our domain credentials since that's what's uh, required here okay and then we have to set some kind of uh, recovery password which and so we will just hit next Okay, and that's our DNS. Okay, so now where are we going to replicate from? Well, our only other DC is DC1 that's on-prem. So you can either select that or have any other domain controller. It wouldn't matter at this point. So, And now where are we going to store the domain files? So now this brings up an interesting question. On this system, we currently have a C drive and we have a D drive. Now, if you remember, this D drive is temporary storage. No data should ever be written to this D drive, okay? Now, do we have any other drives on this server? Uh, let's look at our disk management. So there's no other drives that are on this server. Nothing's hidden, nothing's attached. So let's look back at Azure. So here's Azure, and we've got DC1 here, and there's only one disk that's assigned to the system. So this brings up a good point to add a new disk. So we'll add a managed disk, and this will be for AA-DC1. Uh, let's do cases correctly. And we'll call this data disk zero. 
and this will be put into our Azure Academy resource group and that's located in East US and I'm fine with this being a premium disk and there will be no source type so it's an empty disk and how large do I want it to be? I'm fine with it just being 32 gigs and then we'll hit create so this will give us a new disk object but there's another step that we'll have to do to attach this once it's created which I'll show you so and you can use the same process to attach this disk to any system you see there it is and now this also shows you that when we create a VM through the portal experience we got our VM and we got our disk for the operating system it gave us this long GUID after the name but if you control the disk objects yourself I'm uh, sorry if you create the disk objects yourself you can control the name and we'll get into some more of that when we do automation in our next video so now we have to go into the domain controller and then go to our disks and then we're going to edit this okay and we're going to attach a data disk and it's going to be the data disk that we just created okay so now if we go back We'll clear our notifications. We go back to our VM in the cloud. Oh, look! Now we've got a new disk. So let's initialize this disk. And then we'll create a simple partition. Okay, so now we've got our E drive awesome so now let's go back to here and we'll change our data to be on the e drive and of course you can do all of this with scripting okay all of our uh, checks have been passed successfully and it does give us a few warnings here and uh, there is one warning that I want to point out in particular and that would be this one so this warning indicates that we do not have a static IP address now again what that's referring to is in the network card configuration itself we're using DHCP and this is proper for Azure but Windows Server was originally designed with Active Directory to be best practice to have static IP addresses which is why this is giving us a warning but in Azure this is proper because we have a static DHCP reservation for this system so we're good so we're gonna hit install and we'll be done in a minute or two While we're waiting for that, we'll go back to here, look at our domain controllers as you can see. There is only one domain controller at present. Okay. But we can do a reboot. Now, if we go back, and now we show that we've got a domain controller that's up in Azure at the site of Azure Academy, which it's pulling in that from AD Sites and Services here. And if we do a refresh on our servers, now we've got our new domain controller sitting here. So the last thing I'll show you is that we can change our domain controller and you show our statuses are online so there's our on-prem domain controller and we're logged on to our system that's in the cloud and there we go we're logged on to 
our on-prem domain controller from the cloud. So we have a fully functional network that is connected from on-prem to Azure by a site-to-site -site VPN. And we have our system here that we're looking at through my Windows 10 desktop connected with a point-to-site VPN. And my Windows 10 system is not currently joined to this domain. So it's just my, uh, my, my jump system to get into uh, these environments. So uh, from here, this basically concludes our fundamental series on uh, Azure fundamentals, getting your network up and running and understanding the basics of Azure, as well as building a domain infrastructure so that we can now have hybrid connectivity from on-prem to Azure. So congratulations on completing the fundamentals course. And I want to hear from you guys. What, what would you like to see next as a series? So we could do basically anything, more infrastructure work. We could talk about PaaS services. There's plenty more to do uh, in automation. And uh, so I'd like to hear from you. So give me your feedback. Like the videos if they were good. Uh, if they were not good, then hit that dislike button and tell me how we can improve these things. Subscribe because we'll have plenty more coming in the future. Thanks for joining.